everybody, my name is John. I'm one of the keepers here at the Houston Zoo. Thank you so much for joining us. Uh, I've got some special guests over here with us. Uh, this is Bobby. He's our little baby giraffe. Uh, and he is almost six months old. And then next to him is Joshua with Heather. Hi guys, my name's Heather. I'm also one of the giraffe keepers here at the Houston Zoo. Um, right here above me, I have Joshua. Now Joshua is our adult, fully grown male here. Um, now you might have noticed a difference in coloration between Bobby and his dad, Joshua, here. That's just, they're you know, the same species, just like you and I. We just have different hair colors and different skin colors. So we actually use those differences between our giraffes to help tell them apart. So as you can see, Bobby there has a really light white colored face, just like his mom, Camille. So uh, our giraffes here at the zoo, uh, like she was saying, we've got Maasai giraffe. That's what kind of giraffe. So their spot patterns are totally unique to every single individual, just like fingerprints on people. So uh, the coloration is also different, uh, but also just the spots in general. Um, so if you look at just a certain part of their body, you'll notice that their spots are totally unique. Um, so those spots do a couple different things for the giraffe. One is to camouflage. So uh, it's the way that they kind of hide in their environment. So out in the open savanna, uh, the spot pattern is definitely helpful uh, to kind of try and blend into the background a little bit. So things like lions, hyenas, uh, leopards could all be potential predators uh, for giraffes. And so uh, their spot pattern helps them to kind of blend in. Uh, one of the other features you'll notice uh, as he's over here, this is Joshua. Uh, what he's eating is lettuce, and what he likes to use to eat the lettuce is his long tongue. So their tongues can be about 18 inches, about a foot and a half that can actually stick out. Uh, and it's also that kind of dark purplish color. Uh, it's oftentimes uh, described as being helpful to prevent uh, potential sunburn from happening. Uh, and so that tongue is also prehensile or finger-like, so he can stick his tongue out really far and grab onto that lettuce. Uh, so it's pretty handy uh, to have as you're browsing on branches and leaves all day long. All right, it looks like now we are joined by Asali over here on the far left-hand side. Asali is one of our female giraffes that we have here. And while she's so close, if she bends her head back down, I want to point out those two ossicones that are on top of her head there. Now they look kind of like horns, but there's something completely unique to giraffes and their closest living relatives are to the okapi. So typically, male giraffes are going to use those two ossicones on top of their heads as battering rams for one another. You guys have probably seen videos or photos or even our giraffes standing side by side and swinging their necks at each other. That's a really common behavior. It's called necking. Now typically it's done between two males who are fighting for access to a girlfriend. Um, here, because Joshua is our only fully grown male, sometimes he does like to spar with our ladies like Asali here as well. So as those males do get older, they actually go a little bit bold on top of those ossicones. Now you might notice that Asali here is still pretty fluffy on top there, and baby Bobby is incredibly fluffy on top of those ossicones. Now they are not made out of, um, well, when they're first born, they're made out of cartilage. So when Bobby was born, those blades flat flat against his head and they're really soft and squishy and that simply helps mom out during the birthing process but as they get a little bit older those ossicones ossify which means they turn into bone and as those giraffes do get a little bit older they get a little lumpy and bumpy on their heads um, so it kind of makes them look a little funny but it does help serve a purpose in that it makes their heads even heavier and denser so they're able to use more force against their opponents you can see joshua here is starting to lose a little bit of that hair on the top of his head um, simply from sparring with our lady giraffe. All right, so uh, since we are doing Facebook Live, we can certainly see if you guys have any questions. So if there are any specific questions uh, about our giraffes or the ostriches that you also see here uh, at the zoo as well, uh, you can certainly go ahead and ask those questions and we'll try and answer them the best we can. Uh, some of the other features that you'll notice uh, since we're so up close and personal with our giraffes here uh, is that they obviously are very, very tall. So giraffes are the world's tallest land animal. Uh, Joshua here is pr pretty close to being 16 feet tall. Uh, he's still got a couple more years of growing to do before he's totally done. So he might even reach up to 18 feet tall. Uh, females are a little shorter on average, usually around 14 or 15 feet tall. Uh, however, as you met Asali over there, she's a little bit above average, so uh, she's well over 15 feet tall, closer to 16 feet tall. Uh, so that height because has a combination of where it comes from. Obviously, they have very, very long legs. Uh, the legs are uh, very strong as well, so as you can see, uh, he's got this really thick bone all the way down. 
uh, and those legs are kind of their weapons as well. So uh, the main thing that they use to try and avo avoid predators out in the wild is actually their eyesight. So you can see he's got these big, beautiful eyes. Uh, also quite a vantage point from being so tall. Uh, but what they are able to do is see those predators coming from a pretty far distance away. And they can kind of put the, award, put the warning out, uh, set the alarm off for everybody else uh, out there in the savanna. So if those predators do happen to sneak up on them and they do get a little bit too close, uh, they can use those long uh, legs uh, with those big hooves that are kind of buried in the sand right now uh, to kind of kick and they can kick in 360 degrees away all around from each other. So uh, if there's a lion or some other predator getting a little bit too close, uh, maybe Joshua is going to be trying to protect uh, himself. Maybe uh, mother giraffe is going to be trying to protect her calf. Uh, so they can kick with those really, really powerful legs. Um, also, a big percentage of their height comes from that long neck. So their neck is usually around six to seven feet long. And most of that uh, is actually made up of the exact same number of bones that we have in our neck. So we have seven bones or vertebra in our neck. Uh, they have seven bones or vertebra in their neck as well. It's just that our seven are only about an inch long and their seven is about a foot long. So we still have a Sally here chowing down on some of this romaine lettuce. We've been getting some questions about what our giraffes like to eat. So here you can see they really do enjoy this salad or romaine lettuce. Um, out there in the wild though, their favorite thing to eat is something called the acacia tree. Now that acacia tree has really thick thorns and spines that are covering that tree. So as these guys are eating, you might notice that they've got really fuzzy and hairy lips and they've got some pretty thick sticky saliva. They're pretty drooly animals. But that does actually help them when they are eating their favorite thing, the acacia tree, because it's going to help protect them from being cut on their throats and on their tongues as they're chewing off of those uh, acacia trees. So here we do feed them different types of browse, um, which is simply tree clippings, because these guys are browsers out there in the wild, meaning that they eat trees pretty much all day long. That is also another reason, as you can see, their tongues as they've been eating are dark purple color. That is thought to help serve them uh, protection against from being sunburned in the wild. Um, that probably wouldn't feel too great having a sunburn on your tongue, but luckily our giraffes are protected from that. Uh, throughout the day, they're also gonna get something called alfalfa. It's the exact same thing that horses can eat. It's a really bright green colored hay. They're also gonna get lots of lettuce throughout the day. Um, they also are gonna get something like kale, which the adults don't always seem to mind. Um, but baby Bobby over there, he's just starting to experiment with eating some of our solid food. Once again, he's almost six months old, so he's gonna continue nursing from his mom, Camille, until he's about seven months to a year old. But as you can see, John feeding him over there, he has started eating some of this um, solid food, like the romaine and some of our brows. We also feed our giraffes a pellet diet for breakfast and for dinner. And it's a really tiny pellet, so it's really easy for baby Bobby over there to enjoy as well. Uh, so we've got a few more questions coming in uh, on the stream. So thank you all so much, first of all, uh, for joining us here today. Um, so some of the questions involve the kind of social interaction so that you guys see that we have ostriches here. We've got the zebra as well. Uh, and so the interesting thing about these animals is that they are all herd animals. So they all like to live in groups. So uh, the group doesn't necessarily have to be the same species for them to be uh, happy with uh, the social grouping that they're around. So. Uh, that mixed species herd, uh, which is often what you'll find in the wild as well, uh, is a way, great way for them to help uh, try and protect themselves uh, from those possible predators. So like we said, the ostriches uh, and giraffes also uh, both have really good eyesight. The zebra has really good sense of smell and good sense of hearing, so uh, she could potentially uh, hear those predators coming. Uh, so all together, they're a little bit safer overall. Uh, they also, uh, all living together, kind of get that mutual benefit of kind of getting those social interactions. So uh, they get to play with each other and they get to have a pretty good time. One of the interesting things about Bobby here uh, is that he was the very first little baby giraffe that uh, our zebra, Kapuki, actually got a chance to meet. Uh, and she actually has formed a really interesting little relationship with him. Uh, Kapuki is kind of like our boss of the whole herd. Uh, so she kind of runs the place, even though she's pretty short compared to everybody else out here. Uh, she's a full-grown, healthy uh, zebra. She's what's known as a Grant's zebra or a common zebra. And she and Bobby have this really cute relationship. She just kind of took a shine to him, uh, probably because he was about her size. Uh, and so she was very interested in getting the chance to hang out with him a little bit more. So uh, she 
has, a, like I said, a soft spot for him. So he gets to do a little bit extra than maybe the other giraffes get to do as far as who gets to own what part of the exhibit. So uh, they're pretty interesting as far as they get to a chance to socialize and get to interact with each other. All right, so once again, we did mention that each one of our giraffes does look completely different and unique to one another based on that spot pattern. And those spot patterns hope to serve a couple of different purposes. Number one being camouflage. And number two, actually, that helps keep the giraffes nice and cool on really, really warm days. These guys um, have blood vessels underneath each one of those spots that does help act like an internal AC. So that is what helps keep them nice and cool. Now we also mentioned that we have Maasai giraffes and those are typically found in Kenya. Um, so they live in more savanna wooded type areas. Um, and here we do have a total of six giraffes. Uh, we have our two boys, Joshua over there, and then our baby boy, Bobby, and the rest that we do have are females. Now we do have a wide age variety here in our herd. Um, Joshua, um, who we met earlier, is four years old. Asali here is just about to be nine years old. Baby Bobby is our youngest, just almost six months old. And then we do have a really old female, Tyra, who's 21 years old. Now the typical lifespan on a giraffe is gonna be into their late 20s or their early 30s. So Tyra is getting on up there in age. She's currently located way over on the other side of the exhibit. Now Tyra has had 10 babies in her lifetime, so she's very experienced when it comes to childcare. You can often see her hanging out around baby Bobby, keeping a watchful eye on her, or excuse me, on him. Now she is a grandmother here in our herd, and that's a pretty common sight to see in the wild as well. Your giraffe herds are primarily made up of related females to one another, and your males kind of float between the different herds, so they're not breeding with the same individuals over and over again. Now Tyra, our oldest female, is Asali's mom here, and Asali is actually the mom of Gigi, who's currently way over there checking out that alfalfa feeder. Uh, so we often get a lot of questions about uh, the giraffes that we have here and like especially how we move them around and that sort of thing. So all the interactions that we have through with our giraffes are through what is known as protected contact. Uh, that just means we never share space with our giraffes. So uh, they are quite big and quite powerful. We had a question about how much they weigh earlier. So uh, Bobby, for example, the little baby, when he was first born was about 128 pounds. Uh, so that's them day one. Uh, and currently at almost six months old, he's, um, he's a little bit over 500 pounds. Uh, eventually, as an adult male, he's gonna weigh close to 3,000 pounds. So they are very large animals. Uh, so not only are they very tall, but they're also pretty dense as well. Um, another interesting thing with our giraffes uh, is that they uh, have the same kind of dentition that other ruminants have. So one of the things you'll notice is that uh, when they stick their tongue out, uh, so if you look at their top lip, that upper lip doesn't have any teeth, and that's not because they fell out or anything like that. Uh, they are ruminants, so all ruminants have teeth on the bottom and the front, but they don't have any teeth on the top, they just have a hard palate. Uh, so we had a question about their dentition earlier, so the teeth make up. Uh, they do have teeth on the top and bottom for chewing in the back, um, because all the stuff that they're eating, you'll notice they're not really chewing it very well the first time. They're kind of throwing it in, chewing it and just swallowing it really fast all the way down because they have an interesting digestive system as ruminants. Uh, they have a four chambered stomach. So some of the more common ruminants that you may be more familiar with are things like uh, cattle and goats and sheep and things like that, uh, which means the food that they eat, they're gonna eat it down and then they're gonna later at their leisure kind of bring that back up, chew it again till it gets smaller and smaller and then it kind of goes through the rest of their digestive system. It's a very efficient way of getting a lot of nutrition out of the food. So uh, the amount of food that they eat is actually a surprisingly small amount compared to how big they are because they eat really high quality food. So the leaves uh, that they're eating out there in the wild have a lot more nutrition to them uh, than maybe grasses do, for example. So uh, browsers, which our giraffes are, uh, don't necessarily need to eat a ton of food every single day because the food that they're eating is very high quality. So. Uh, looking out over the herd, we've got uh, all six of our giraffe out there. We've got our three ostriches and our zebra. So we'll kind of go through everybody's names real quick. So this is Henrietta. She's one of our ostriches. Uh, this is Gertrude. And then we've got Agatha hanging out over there. So those are our three lady ostriches. Uh, we've got Tyra over here. Uh, next is Asali, Gigi, and Joshua. And then Camille is way on the other side. She's enjoying some enrichment. Uh, from this morning, which is a nice fun pile of leaves. And then we've got baby Bobby over here who seems to have found himself a little stick. 
Uh, and then we've got our zebra over there, uh, Kapuki. So that's everybody that we've got out here uh, for you all today. Um, we'll get one more question maybe yeah, so in over there. we had a couple of um, other really great questions. One that stood out was, are the giraffes social with their caretakers? They definitely are, but as you can see, as soon as we ran out of that lettuce, we're no longer entertaining to them and they went ahead and walked away. However, they are extremely social with us. We do a lot of training with our giraffes, um, especially starting out with baby Bobby there at such a young age. Because giraffes do rely so heavily on their eyesight, it's really easy for them to pick us out of a crowd and they definitely do come over to us uh, when we do call them. Now we also got another question about their spot patterns and how they differ from other species. So once again, we do have Maasai giraffes here and a really easy way to tell them apart from other species is gonna be that shape of those spots. So you can see on baby Bobby there that those spots are really leafy and unevenly shaped. Um, they're not very square or very uniform. You can also maybe see that those spots do go all the way down to his tippy toes. So that is a really good indication that these guys are Maasai giraffes. Now your other more common type of giraffe that you see in a zoo is something called a reticulated giraffe and they have really square uniform shaped spots. So that's a really good difference to tell between the two of them. Uh, we got a, a couple other questions that were really awesome. So I mentioned enrichment earlier, kind of in happening. What enrichment is, is just kind of how we uh, get a chance to get the giraffes to do a lot more uh, kind of naturalistic behaviors. Um, so enrichment is d things that we can give them to uh, encourage natural behavior. So uh, exploring a leaf pile, for example, is something they could certainly do in the wild, uh, but we, we provide them with that opportunity. So it can also be different scents, um, so different smells, so it could be extracts and things like that. Uh, we also have some toys and uh, also training in general. So when we do training with our, our giraffes, that's a form of mental stimulation, so that's enriching for them as well. Um, and I think we also had a, a pretty good question uh, about uh, the way that they communicate, so the, the way that giraffes communicate. So uh, a lot of the kind of fun things is what does the giraffe say and then the kid just doesn't know what the giraffe says. Um, and it's fairly accurate because giraffes mainly communicate in a frequency that is so low that our human ears actually can't perceive it uh, as sound. And so they are constantly talking to each other. They can communicate very effectively. Um, but it's just in such a low frequency that our human ears can't hear it. There are some communications that giraffes make uh, that we can hear, uh, but it's almost more body language. They actually flap their ears back and forth. Uh, they can snort and they can kind of bleat the uh, same way, kind of like sheep and goats kind of make sounds as well. Uh, but that's generally not the main sound that they actually use. So those are all very good questions. Uh, I think we also have a pretty exciting uh, fun thing for you guys to check out as well. So earlier I was talking about, these are our, these are our three ostrich ladies. Uh, and just like uh, most female birds out there, they're gonna continue to lay eggs. So even though we don't have a male, this is what an ostrich egg looks like. This is how big one whole ostrich egg looks like. Uh, it is empty, there's a hole in it. We took all the contents out. So it normally weighs about four or five pounds. Uh, it's sort of this uh, same size as like a small melon. But the interesting thing about an ostrich egg is it has about two dozen chicken eggs worth of stuff in it. So it's very large. It's the world's largest egg. And these are the world's largest birds. It looks like we do have Joshua joining us once again. Um, we did run out of lettuce, so instead we're feeding him some of our other dietary options that we feed our giraffes here. Um, so right now he's chowing down on some of this cut up sweet potato and carrots uh, that they also really enjoy as part of their diet. Um, now in the wild, typically they're going to spend most of the time just browsing from different types of trees. Um, however, that doesn't mean that every single tree is safe for them to eat. So we are provided safe, healthy browse for them by our amazing horticulture team. Um, so when you are here at the zoo, if you see them eating some browse, it's because we have given it to them um, and it is safe for them to enjoy. I think we have some other questions we're able to answer. Yeah, so uh, we're probably gonna be wrapping up soon. So if you do have any last minute questions, feel free to just keep sending them through. We're gonna be looking at them uh, as we're kind of finishing up over here. Uh, but we just wanted to thank you guys, first of all, for joining us here uh, at the Houston Zoo. So uh, our animals are um, certainly excited to, to share their day with you guys. Um, and one of the things that we definitely wanna thank you all for helping us out with uh, is helping to save these animals in the wild. So. Uh, even though the zoo is closed, we still have partners around the world doing that same work uh, that they are always doing, which is to help save these animals in the wild. So they're helping to protect their habitat, they're 
uh, out there patrolling, making sure that the animals are kind of less and less threatened uh, by poaching and habitat loss and destruction and things like that. So uh, that would not be possible unless we had the amazing support of all of our friends and family uh, near and far. So when the zoo reopens, we definitely would encourage you guys to come on back down uh, and help to help uh, support that amazing effort that we have to save these animals in the wild. Alrighty guys, we hope you enjoy this more up close and personal look at our giraffes. If you're interested in seeing more behind the scenes here at the zoo, definitely make sure to tune in tomorrow. Uh, we'll be highlighting another species uh, for you guys to learn more about tomorrow. Uh, we hope you guys have a great rest of the day. Bye.